Welcome to our latest episode, unveiling the tax agenda behind beneficial owner registers. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about how global transparency efforts are not to stop crime, not like they've been sold to us. Their reason is solely to collect taxes and what you can do to protect yourself. Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored Podcast, straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. CRS and beneficial owner registers have but one purpose, tax collection. They have nothing to do with stopping money laundering or financial crime. You can't tax wealth unless you know where it is. That is the true purpose of FATCA, CRS, and beneficial owner registers. It's wealth surveillance, plain and simple. Do you think it is a coincidence that wealth taxes are being proposed all over the world only a few short years after beneficial owner registers were widely implemented, or that countries are talking about implementing citizenship-based taxation like the U.S.? It's not. This was always the plan. As it so often is, it was a bait and switch by government. What else could the purpose of these transparency initiatives have been when they clearly have zero chance at stopping or even reducing money laundering or financial crime. Let's start with FATCA and CRS. FATCA requires four non-US financial institutions like banks, trust companies, and funds to report information about US account holders to the IRS. The information reported includes bank account balances. Do you think an American drug lord or a tax evader is gonna put their foreign account in their own name if they know the information is gonna be transmitted to the IRS? No, of course not. They'll use a straw man. The same goes for CRS, which like FATCA, requires financial institutions to transmit data, including account balances, to countries whose residents have accounts in the reporting country. Again, do you think criminals are gonna put accounts in their own names? No, they're gonna use a straw man or a structure run by a straw man. And the same goes for beneficial owner registers. Do you think a criminal is gonna list themselves as the beneficial owner of a company? Not a chance. Again, they'll use a straw man or some kind of a structure run by a straw man. I remember when the UK beneficial owner register was first implemented, I was discussing it with some transparency advocate on a panel at an international tax conference. He was so proud because when the beneficial owner register in the UK was implemented, they were able to identify 1,200 possible cases of criminal conduct. But what he failed to say is that, so out of 3 million companies in the UK, they were able to identify 1,200 cases of possible criminal conduct. That right there is proof that beneficial owner registers are completely ineffective. All of these transparency initiatives are easily defeated by lying. So either governments are so stupid that they believe criminals would list themselves as account holders or beneficial owners of companies, or they had an ulterior motive. My opinion, it's clearly the latter. It's no secret that the governments of the US, EU, and other wealthy countries are fiscally irresponsible. It's absolutely mind-blowing how frivolous they spend money, and they have no strategy for paying for it other than raising taxes on the wealthy and businesses, and eventually everybody. Our rights and freedoms are being eroded, and we need to protect ourselves and our wealth. At some point, the oppressive taxation that already exists will become outright confiscation. Now, I'm not saying that governments will just start arbitrarily confiscating people's wealth. What I think is going to happen is that the penalties for any minor infraction of the law will become astronomical. Think Switzerland's income-based speeding fines. And it's not going to get any better. Fiscal surveillance to track, tax, and confiscate wealth is only going to get worse, especially as technology, in particular AI, improves. So how do you protect yourself? Unfortunately, I don't have a definitive answer, but living in a high tax country and owning assets in your own name for sure is not the answer. In my opinion, legally protecting your wealth and your personal freedom requires the following. First, move to a country that offers tax advantage living and that is wealth friendly. Second, get your wealth out of your name. Put it in structures like trusts and foundations so you don't own it. I've already done a ton of content on this, and if you want to know more about how trusts and foundations can, can help protect your assets and handle your estate planning needs and provide you privacy, check out some of my other podcasts or 
some of the videos on my YouTube channel. Third, diversify your wealth into various tax and asset protection friendly jurisdictions. You know the old saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now this goes for your residencies as well, right? Have multiple residencies so if one becomes unfavorable, you have another and you can move quickly. The idea here is always to have a backup residency so you don't need time to go set it up, time you may not have. You wanna be able to have it already in place so you can move. And closely related to that is have a backup structure. Basically have a second structure set up somewhere else. The country where you have your primary structure, like your trust or foundation becomes unattractive, you can quickly move your assets from your primary structure into your backup structure. I did an episode on backup structures last week. If you missed it, I'll put a link in the description. And the sooner you implement the above, the better. Governments know that people are using these strategies, and so obviously they want to stop them. They use things like exit taxes to make it expensive for people to leave. Although often in the long term, it's still cheaper to pay the exit tax than continuing to pay tax on an ongoing basis. Or they implement laws, for example, that trigger tax when you transfer assets into a structure. Or like the US, they continue to tax you on the income of assets transferred to a trust or foundation, even though you don't own them anymore. The noose is tightening. Countries will continue to pass laws, making it more difficult and expensive for you and your wealth to escape their tax net. I firmly believe that in the next 10 years, it will become almost impossible to set up new structures that offer any real benefits. So if you don't do it now, you may not be able to do it at all. To recap, we've just discussed the real reason for all this transparency nonsense and what you can do to protect yourself. If you wanna learn more about trusts and foundations and their benefits, check out my Trusts and Foundations Guide. I'll put a link in the description where you can download it.